$335 million. That's how much Lockheed Martin has lost on a classified program since 2022. The Air Force won't confirm it exists, Lockheed won't deny it, and that fictional jet you saw on Top Gun, it was built with blueprints from something very real. Right now, somewhere in the Nevada desert, the fastest aircraft ever conceived might already be flying. Mach 6, twice the speed of the legendary Blackbird. And today, you're gonna discover why everything you thought was Hollywood fantasy is actually Cold War reality on steroids. The SR-72 isn't coming, it might already be here. Because here's what they're not telling you about that $335 million hole in Lockheed's Bridget. In July 2024, Lockheed Wharton filed paperwork with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Buried in the quarterly report was a line item, $45 million over budget on an unnamed classified aeronautics program. But that wasn't the shocking part. This was the third straight year of overruns. The total, $335 million and climbing. No official confirmation, no program name just money vanishing into the blackness of America's most secretive aviation projects. And every analyst tracking military aviation knows exactly what that money is buying. The son of Blackbird is growing up. Let's go back to 2013. Lockheed Martin breaks decades of silence and does something unprecedented. They publicly announce a successor to the SR-71 Blackbird, not through official channels, not through the Pentagon, through Aviation Week magazine. And the response was so massive, it crashed the magazine servers within hours. Why would the world's most secretive aircraft developer suddenly advertise a spy plane that didn't officially exist? If you think you know the answer, type yes in the comments below, and let's see how many of you are really tracking what's happening in the shadows of American aerospace. Because the reason reveals everything about how this program actually works. Lockheed wasn't asking for permission, they were building it anyway and they wanted someone to notice. Here's how the Skunk Works has always operated. They don't wait for contracts. They don't wait for approval. They build revolutionary aircraft based on what they believe America will need, sometimes decades before the Pentagon realizes it needs them. They did it with the U-2. They did it with the SR-71 Blackbird. They did it with the F-117 Stealth Fighter. And they're doing it again with the SR-72. But this time, something's different. The technology they're attempting would have been pure science fiction just 10 years ago. The SR-71 Blackbird flew at Mach 3.2. That's over 2,000 miles per hour. For three decades, it held the record as the fastest air-breathing aircraft ever built. Russian missiles couldn't catch it. Enemy fighters couldn't touch it. It simply outran everything. When the Air Force retired it in 1998, they eliminated a capability no other nation possessed. Now, imagine something twice as fast. The SR-72 is designed to cruise at Mach 6. That's 4,000 miles per hour. At that speed, you could fly from New York to London in less time than it takes to watch a football game. Los Angeles to Tokyo, 90 minutes. That's not just fast, that's rewriting the rules of global power. But here's where it gets interesting. Speed isn't the hard part anymore. The engine is. Traditional jet engines stop working above Mach 2.2. The air coming in moves so fast it can't be compressed properly. The engine chokes. This is why most supersonic aircraft hit a wall around Mach 3. But scramjet engines, the kind that work at hypersonic speeds, can't operate during takeoff. They need the aircraft to already be moving at Mach 4 just to start working. It's the classic Catch-22 of hypersonic flight. You need to be hypersonic to go hypersonic. Lockheed's solution is brilliant. They're combining both engines into one system. It's called a turbine-based combined cycle engine. During takeoff and at low speeds, it operates as a normal turbofan. As the aircraft accelerates past Mach 3, it transitions to scramjet mode. The engine literally transforms mid-flight, allowing the SR-72 to operate from zero to Mach 6 and back again. No other aircraft in history has attempted this, and according to a Lockheed executive in 2018, they've already tested it. Jack O'Banion, vice president of strategy at Skunk Works, told aerospace engineers that the SR-72 flight research vehicle was already flying. 
His exact words, the aircraft is agile at hypersonic speeds with reliable engine starts. Then he stopped talking. Lockheed scrubbed mentions of the SR-72 from their website, the executives went silent, and the program disappeared back into the shadows. What happened? Russia happened. In March 2018, Russian leader Putin gave a speech unveiling Russia's new hypersonic weapons. He showed videos of Kinzhal missiles streaking through the atmosphere at Mach 10. He displayed the avant-garde hypersonic glide vehicle. And he made it clear Russia was winning the hypersonic arms race. Within days, every public reference to the SR-72 vanished from Lockheed Martin's communications. The message was clear. This wasn't a program for magazine covers anymore. This was a weapon system for World War III, and loose lips sink hypersonic ships. But the money kept flowing. Those cost overruns kept appearing in quarterly reports. Something big was still being built in the California desert. Now let's talk about what makes the SR-72 different from every other hypersonic project out there. Because understanding this reveals why America needs this aircraft so badly right now. China and Russia both have hypersonic missiles, but those are single-use weapons. You launch them, they hit a target, they're gone. The SR-72 is reusable. It takes off from a runway, flies a mission at Mach 6, and lands back home. Then it does it again the next day. That's not a missile. That's a strategic game changer. Satellites have a problem. They follow predictable orbits. When a spy satellite passes over Beijing at 10 in the morning, Chinese military commanders know to hide their secrets for those 20 minutes. They cover their missile launchers. They move their aircraft into hangars. They wait for the satellite to pass, then go back to work. You can't do that with the SR-72. It doesn't follow an orbit it doesn't announce its arrival. One minute, it's over California. 90 minutes later, it's photographing military installations in the South China Sea. And it's moving so fast, by the time you detect it, it's already gone. Modern air defense systems are incredible pieces of technology. Russia's S-400 can track dozens of targets simultaneously. China's HQ-9 can engage aircraft over 100 miles away. These systems were designed to protect against stealth bombers, cruise missiles, and enemy fighters, but they weren't designed for something moving at Mach 6 at 80,000 feet. The math is brutal. A missile traveling at Mach 5 needs to be launched with perfect timing to intercept an aircraft traveling at Mach 6. The engagement window is measured in seconds, not minutes. And that's assuming the radar can even maintain a lock on a stealth aircraft traveling that fast. Most air defense radars start having serious problems tracking targets above Mach 5. The radar return becomes unstable, the computer predictions fall apart. The SR-72 isn't designed to dodge missiles. It's designed to simply be faster than the mathematics that guide them. And our Air Force isn't building this just for reconnaissance. This aircraft is designed to carry weapons, specifically hypersonic weapons. Lockheed is developing something called the High Speed Strike Weapon. It's an air-launched hypersonic missile designed to be carried by the SR-72. Imagine the scenario. An SR-72 penetrates enemy airspace at Mach 6, launches a Mach 5 missile at a high-value target, and exits the area before anyone can respond. The entire mission, from entry to exit, takes minutes, not hours, minutes. That's not just reconnaissance. That's power projection at a level no other nation can match. Now here's where the timeline gets interesting and why 2025 might be the year everything changes. Back in 2013, Lockheed said they'd have a flying demonstrator by 2018 and an operational aircraft by 2030. Those dates slipped. Then in 2024, something shifted the cost overruns suddenly spiked. 45 million in a single quarter. And multiple defense analysts started reporting the same thing. A prototype could fly by the end of 2025. That's not speculation anymore. That's money on the table and metal in the air. There's another clue hidden in plain sight. 
In 2021, an Air Force recruitment video showed something unusual, a digital rendering of a sleek, hypersonic aircraft that looked suspiciously like the published SR-72 concept drawings. The Air Force never commented on it. They didn't need to. The message was for Beijing and Moscow, not the American public. We're closer than you think. But let's address the elephant in the hangar. That Dark Star aircraft from Top Gun Maverick. Was it the SR-72? Yes and no. The movie prop was a collaboration between Hollywood and Lockheed Skunk Works. Tom Cruise wanted the aircraft to look real because he wanted the movie to feel real. So Lockheed provided design input based on actual hypersonic research. The result was a 70-foot prop that looked so authentic, foreign intelligence services reportedly analyzed the film frame by frame. But Dark Star was fictional. The SR-72 is not. Here's the key difference. Dark Star in the movie could supposedly reach Mach 10. The SR-72 targets Mach 6. Why? Because Mach 6 is achievable with current technology. Mach 10 with an air-breathing engine is still science fiction. Lockheed built the movie prop to be inspirational. They're building the SR-72 to be operational. And there's another program nobody's talking about that proves hypersonic flight is no longer experimental. A company called Hermius, based in Atlanta, is building their own hypersonic aircraft called Quarter Horse. They're using the same turbine-based combined cycle approach as the SR-72. 2023, they successfully tested their engine transitioning from turbojet to ramjet mode. Not in a wind tunnel, in actual flight conditions. A private startup with a fraction of Lockheed's resources proved the core technology works. If a startup can do it, imagine what Skunk Works has already accomplished with unlimited black budget funding. The strategic implications of this aircraft are staggering. For 70 years, America's military dominance rested on three pillars. Aircraft carriers, stealth technology, and global reach. The SR-72 adds a fourth pillar, hypersonic speed. China's building aircraft carriers, Russia's developing new stealth fighters, both nations are expanding their area denial capabilities with advanced missile systems designed to keep American forces at bay. The SR-72 makes all of that irrelevant. You can't deny access to something that moves too fast to stop. There's a reason the Pentagon is willing to absorb $335 million in cost overruns and counting. This isn't about building a cool airplane. This is about maintaining American air superiority for the next 50 years. And our aerospace engineers deserve incredible credit for even attempting this. The thermal challenges alone are mind-boggling. At Mach 6, air friction heats the aircraft's skin to over 2,000 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to melt steel. The SR-72 uses advanced ceramic composites and active cooling systems to manage temperatures that would destroy conventional aircraft in seconds. The guidance systems have to work in conditions no computer was designed for. The materials have to maintain strength while glowing red hot. The fuel has to flow through engines operating at temperatures found inside a blast furnace. Every single system on this aircraft is pushing the absolute edge of what's physically possible. And somewhere in the high desert of California, American engineers are making it work. Because that's what we do. The SR-71 Blackbird was considered impossible until Kelly Johnson and his team at Skunk Works built it anyway. The F-117 stealth fighter violated every principle of aerodynamics until it didn't. The U-2 spy plane was supposed to be unflyable until Francis Gary Powers took it to 70,000 feet. American aerospace engineering has a long history of turning impossible into inevitable. The SR-72 is the next chapter in that story. And based on the money trail, the executive statements, and the technology demonstrations we're seeing from related programs, that chapter is being written right now. Not in 10 years, not in 5 years. Now. Will we see it publicly in 2025? Probably not. These programs stay classified for decades. We might not get official confirmation until the 2040s, when the next generation is already being tested. But the aircraft will be flying. Missions will be flown. Intelligence will be gathered. 
and America's adversaries will be left wondering how we're seeing things we shouldn't be able to see. That's the real program behind the rumors. Not a Hollywood fantasy, not an aviation enthusiast's dream, but a deliberate, methodical, expensive effort to build the fastest operational aircraft in human history and give America's military a capability no other nation can match. $335 million says it's real, the cost overruns say it's close, and the silence from Skunk Works says it's probably closer than anyone realizes. The skies above us are about to get a lot faster. And somewhere, right now, an American pilot or an autonomous system is preparing for the day when Mach 6 becomes just another day at the office. If this breakdown gave you a new perspective on what's really happening in classified aviation, hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into the programs that never make the headlines. The next generation of warfare isn't coming. It's already here. We just can't see it yet.